Yeah. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. This is Kathy Neifeld with Agency One, and I am thrilled to be bringing you my good friend and colleague, uh, Vince Dodona, who is one of the founding uh, partners of the technology platform Currents, which we are going to be introducing to you today. Uh, Vince is a founding member at Valiant Wealth. At Valiant Wealth, he has 42 years of experience providing services in four core areas: estate planning, exit planning for the owners of closely held businesses, distribution planning for those at or near retirement, and investment coaching. He was inducted into the NAPEC Estate Planning Hall of Fame in 2017. Well, Vince, I can't believe that was almost seven years ago. Yeah. Uh, he's often known as the expert's expert and has helped hundreds of individuals move closer to their full financial potential. In doing this, Vince recognized a need for a technology that uh, you can use with your clients that will help them find money to do the planning that is essential uh, to reach the financial security that we're all helping or trying to help our clients, clients achieve throughout their lives. Um, Vince was kind enough to introduce to Agency One 100 Advisors uh, the current technology during our annual meeting this past May. And we had significant interest from a number of advisors that wanted to both hear the presentation again and wanted to introduce it to their colleagues. So Vince was kind enough to say, I will come back and do a webinar for Agency One. This is being recorded so uh, and will be available in the next day or two. Lisa will, uh, Lisa will advise everyone when it's available on the website. And um, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Vince. If anybody has questions, uh, please type them into the chat box and um, we will uh, address them um, as they come in. So with that, Vince, I'm going to turn it over to you and thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Um, and thank you all my friends at Agency One. So uh, I'm assuming I'm clear, Chris? Yeah. Okay, good. I have my, I have my lab on. So uh, this is going to be a different presentation than I did at the uh, conference, the same basic structure. And I want to clarify something. So I did not invent this. Um, I am a founding owner of Currents. Uh, my friend and uh, partner, David Mozika, created it, um, but it has been a hell of a ride, and I think that it really changes the game as far as what we do with clients. So let's see where we start. So if you, I'm starting with the term capital. So capital is wealth in the form of money or other assets owned by a person or organization. And if you think about the business of being an advisor, what is the most important capital that we possess? And I would argue it's relationship capital. So it's, it's how we move with clients into the future. And it is also data. Matter of fact, I'm just mentioning that if you did an open talk with somebody and you got data, the case is basically over. The key is to get the data. But what's really important is holding on to data and having data in the moment-to-moment -moment relationship with the client so that way the client and the advisor can act together. So where does currents fit in the world? Well, if you look at the current model of distribution, advisors work for institutions typically and their clients end up being owned by the institution. Like if you actually asked uh, an insurance company who owns the data, they would tell you that they do. If they own the client. Um, and that's whether or not you're dealing with a broker relationship or an agent relationship makes no difference. But in the world that we're talking about, the client gives the money to the company and the company gives it to the advisor. Now, the marketplace is vast. And anytime you have a vast untapped marketplace, and by, by reference, um, Finseca has a very good relationship with Limra. And so we know certain data points. There is a literally a $29 trillion coverage gap in the United States, meaning that the difference between the amount of life insurance that could be bought by individuals 
and the amount that is owned by individuals is $29 trillion, which is more than the industry could satisfy. Uh, we also know there's something like 100 million families that are uninsured. So whenever you see a massive gap, that leaves room for the fintech and robo space. And so what companies are doing in the robo environment, in the fintech environment, which is enormous, is they're trying to disenfranchise the advisor, literally cut the advisor out of the relationship with the consumer. Now, we believe that what we've created literally can disrupt that entire environment, both the current and the fintech robo world, because what's happening in the current world, and we'll talk about what that is in a minute, is the client seeks out the advisor and the advisor sends the money ultimately to the institution, but is the advisor who's in the catbird seat. And the reason why is the advisor now owns two very important things. They own the data and they own the relationship. So what's ahead for us in the industry? Well, what's ahead is that money over the next several years is going to be changing hands. And the silent generation is now in the process of transferring 13 trillion to heirs, and which is the largest wealth transfer in history. And by the way, the actually correction, it's the baby boomers have the 68 trillion, but the millennials actually have five trillion of their own. So over the next 25 years, 68 trillion dollars will transfer from boomers to millennials. And so that'll eclipse the current financial wealth transfer by a factor of more than five times. And it's gonna be transferred to about half the number of beneficiaries. Right, the baby boom generation was a very large generation. So what do we know about the transference of money. And some of you on this call may be my age or a little younger, and some of you might be way younger, but I want you to understand that the money that we just talked about is going to walk out the door. And what plan do you have to hold on to that money? So more than 70% of heirs are likely to fire or change their financial advisor after inheriting their parents' wealth, according to Cerule. But more frightening is when husband dies and wife inherits, it's still also 70% of the money is gonna go high. So there's something broken about the way we deal with clients in that regard. More than half, 51% of clients who had over 10 million in personal AUM indicate they would seek a new advisor to oversee all their assets if they received a significant inheritance. So that doesn't bode well for any of us either. And how about 78% of financial advisors say developing relationships with the client's children is very important, and 22 say it's at least somewhat important. So they know that this is true, and yet our industry does not focus on that. Every company that I've ever been associated with, and, and clearly, you know, I've been with the Guardian for 43 years and nine months before I changed affiliations, but, you know, but I've been, been involved with many companies, all of them say money goes hot at death. So what's our solution? We believe the solution is income under management. Hi there, welcome to Currents. We're a money management platform designed to help your clients get more out of their cash flow and make your job a whole lot easier. Traditionally, people keep their day-to-day -day cash in checking accounts, funneling earnings in and moving what's left towards savings when they can. Accumulation takes time and effort. Our money management method flips that system on its head. Putting savings first and moving all available cash through a single central account called a reservoir. The system makes it simple for your clients to direct spending and to save more effortlessly. And it gives you real-time visibility into every aspect of their financial lives. With Currents, your clients save up to 600% more than the national average. So you can focus your efforts on helping them create new passive income streams to achieve financial freedom faster. Our cash flow management system is easy to set up. 
Just input the cash flowing in and schedule what needs to go out, allowing every extra dollar to accumulate automatically. Soon, the system runs on autopilot. The dashboard enables seamless, proactive, and individualized collaboration. And it puts you at the intersection of your client's paycheck and their most important financial decisions. It's now possible to engage clients sooner and keep them longer while creating more opportunities for you to help them grow their money. You'll get a dashboard to see all of your clients in one place and to collaborate with office team members. And your clients will also have an easy to use mobile app to stay in the loop. While we take care of cash flow management, you are free to support your clients as they plan for the future. It's really that simple. Currents. Livecurrents.com. Hi there. So what does Currents look like? Well, first we have an account called the Reservoir. And the reservoir is bolted to our technology, which I'll describe more a little later. We use direct deposits primarily to link income from all sources, uh, either it's direct deposits or ACHs, depending on what it is, to the reservoir. And then we connect the reservoir to the bill pay accounts. So we are not changing the banking environment. Now, where the magic happens here is that we actually create a bifurcation between people's consumption and their wealth building. And it becomes crystal clear that they are separate and distinct. Now, I'm, I'll say this because I'm a practitioner as well as one of the owners of the company. When you have done this, transactions happen at lightning speed, literally lightning speed, because, uh, well, I think for everybody on this call who's in the life insurance business, you know that the client is always wondering whether they can afford the solutions we offer up. And the reason why they worry about that is because they cannot distinguish what they're living on from what they're saving and accumulating. It's, it's a rare person who has that broken down you know, very precisely. And so for the most part, the advisor lives in the, in the abstract, giving advice over what to do with money you know, buying life insurance or investments, but it's not a clear, it's not a bright line. So when you look at this situation with the inflows and outflows, once there's money accumulated in the reservoir, and by the way, we a client will typically agree to some target number, which is usually something like three times their burn rate. Once they agree to that, then the advisor advises on where to place that money investments, permanent insurance, term, disability. They might want to put it back in their business. They may be interested in buying investment real estate, which we don't, I don't do that. But the point is, is that they get to make a clear decision. Now, why doesn't this happen naturally? Well, the reason why is because of what, something we call the cash flow food chain. This is the default structure, the default spending pattern that everybody lives inside of. So the client receives a paycheck. And here's an example. I just recontracted with Mass Mutual. The first question they asked me was, where do you want to direct deposit your paycheck? So I give them my checking account. Now, the moment I give them the checking account, in our brains, the checking account is in fact our bill pay account. And what happens? Everything that we spend happens out of that account. It's visible to us. We tend to consume our money. In the physical world, the earned income that we produce perhaps it earned and maybe even passive income, is earmarked for expenses. And then if there's anything left over at the end of the month, it goes to savings. So for the client and for us, we exist at the bottom of that food chain. And so we're not, you know, if, when I was a guardian advisor, I wasn't competing with Mass Mutual or New York Life or Lincoln. I was competing with Netflix and travel and other existing financial products, car payments, housing payments. That's where I was working off of. Now, what we say is that the world we live inside of is a world of unconscious consumption. So as income rises, expenses rise to meet that income. And we are constantly chasing 
that differential to try to sell our products. That's what we do. And sometimes we end up doing things that are not necessarily in the client's best interest, like uh, underfunding permanent products, which makes them more fragile in the future. So how do we set this on its ear? Well, the first thing is we want people to drop their money into savings and we want those savings, and, we, and by the way, the reservoir is an interest-bearing checking account with a rate right now over a little over 3%. We want to attach that to our technology. So actually this account, specific account is attached to our technology. And from there, we want them to pay their expenses. By changing the direction of the cash flow, what happens is the advisor moves up into the position between the client paycheck and the checking account. And so you are the destination for all the money in the client's world. Now, the exact opposite of unconscious consumption is unconscious savings. So as income rises, once we insert the reservoir, expenses get to travel on their own path. And then we as advisors live in the space between income and expense. Now, um, I think what I'm going to do is, let me see, yeah, my, okay, this is fine. So here's a client that nobody on this call would be interested in, right? Um, they have uh, $200,000 of after-tax cash flow, and their burn rate is $200,000. We have a 30-year time horizon. So these people are saving zero. So the contortions to try to get them to save with the contortions to figure out where you're going to put your premium are beyond. Like, would you ever spend time with this client? Now, assuming that you had a 5% rate of return on your money, the income this client would have earned over this period of time was $11,200,000. By that's going up at 4%. But again, the expenses rose at $11,200,000 because expenses tend to rise in lockstep with earnings. Now, what if, crazy thought, what if in doing this, we were able to slow consumption, slow consumption to about 2%. Now, I'm not saying that's going to be the number. It could be three. It could be zero in a year. So Dave, my partner, has orthopedic surgeons in New Jersey as clients. He grabbed them at a residency. 20 years ago, they now will make like over a million, but they're still living on $180,000 a year. So we know consumption can slow. I, I, I've i actually seen with my own clients that most of them don't even increase their lifestyle when they get pay increases because they're fine. Like life work goes on. So here, just as before, the income is $11,216,000. But if you look at they insert the reservoir and you look at the ex expenses, that's 8113000 $8 That differential in the investment world is $5 million bucks. In other words, even though 11.2 minus 8.1 is only like 3.1, the differential invested is $5 million bucks. Now that makes somebody with no savings into a client over time. And that doesn't include promotions or step raises or um, getting married and having a spouse with additional income, like none of that. So this is a very dramatic result for that. And what about over a 20-year period? Right? What does it look like over a 20-year period? The same deal, income, expense, all this new business up front here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show something kind of dramatic. Um, what, what screen did I put it on? Here's the question. Give me a second. Okay. Found it. Okay. So let's pretend for a minute that you're an advisor. And by the way, I'm giving you a money under management example. Um And as they often say, a blind pig can find an acorn eventually. So I'm going to suggest to you that 
If you had clients that looked like this, you'd be able to sell life insurance till the cows come home. But we're looking at a time horizon. So pretend the first year that you're working, you're looking at 35 year olds, okay? And you're looking over a 30 year time horizon. That's your time horizon of 30 years. And you corralled, it's, it's funny, the last conference I was at, Dave said, you really worked hard and found um, 20 clients that you could put into the system where their net cash flows were $5 million and their burn rate was 4.5 million. Now here's the reality. I have a friend in Colorado, young woman, who is putting on two currency accounts per month. So she will literally have close to 100 accounts by the end of a full year. And this is only, and, and by the way, her money and the, her income and the management is way more than this. But let's say you did this for one year. All you did was you put $5 million of net income in and your client's burn rate was 4.5. And because of currents, their income went up at 4% and their expenses went up at two. At the end of the 30 year period, the amount of money, and by the way, this is with no return, the amount of money would be $98 million. That's the client money in client's money in the deal. To look at it another way, if you want to see what the annual differential is, this is the amount that would be hitting savings every year if all the clients that year had income increases at 4% and their consumption went up at two. Now, working one year is really not a sufficient situation. So what happens if you do it the following year? And what happens if you do it the following year? And let's say you only worked hard, assuming that you think of this as working hard, for five years. So every year, you took in $5 million of net after tax income and 4.5 went out to consumption. And you did that each year going forward. Well, you would have $417 million of client money available for use. And by the way, if they actually got a 5% rate of return on that, um, that would be $708 million of assets. But wait, why would you stop after five years of work? What about doing it for another five years so that way you really worked hard for 10 years? Well, if you really worked hard for 10 years, you would actually be managing $758 million of client money. That's without a return. With a return at five, that would be a billion two. And so my friend, who happens to be in the AUM business, will likely end up with way more than this in a relatively short order because this assumes somebody is not is slopping off. I mean, really, not like not making a dent in their life. And, uh, you know, we have hundreds of advisors that are doing just this. Okay, so let me move this off screen. There we go. So again, if you worked really hard, you'd end up producing some astonishing results. Let's skip forward through this. Okay, so what do you get? What is it? Well, Currents is a structural solution assisted with best-in-class technology. So as we said, you create this reservoir. Uh, by the way, it takes about 10 minutes for a client to get bolted together. And then the advisor has a dashboard. And the advisor's dashboard has very important information on it. First of all, it'll have upcoming life events for the client, but it also shows who has a surplus balance. It shows people who are negative, and those people could be people who just started, who haven't gotten up to their target. You also know who has the largest reservoir deposits and, and whether or not they have deviated from their baseline. And because this because of the way the app works, they can give you unsolicited referrals. Matter of fact, one advisor in January this year got 18 unsolicited referrals from the app on the client she already had in currents. And then the client himself has an app and the app has all the information that the advisor has. So at all points in time, both the advisor and the client have the exact same information. So that way, when the advisor speaks to the client, they can transact quickly and effectively. And you can see that they can move, the client can move money inside the app. 
The advisor, by the way, does not move money. This is not a custodial issue. The client sets everything up and the client moves the money at the guidance of the advisor. Um, and, the, and so the client can see all sorts of information relating to that. And then of course can communicate with the client and get support if necessary, okay? So with income under management, the goal is to meet the client at their paycheck and create a savings first structure and change their behavior and to become a de destination and be connected to every financial choice. And so I can answer that's by the way, is a code to get in um, if you wish, but I think I have some more slides. We'll come back to that in a minute. Um, this, is a, this actually is a real life example. I don't think Kathy saw this before or Quinzala. This is a real life client that started, that, that um, Dave met and on December 10th of 2022, they literally had no savings and no life insurance, nothing. And Dave got them to set up currents and put $10 into currents. And then, the husband and wife both had payroll deposited directly into the account. And then they had bill pay that was going out to their um, a, a regular consumption account. And they had income coming in. So he's a commission sales guy with, uh, with uh, um, Medtronics, which is a medical device company. Uh, she's a regular employee at Philips, but you know, so there's direct deposit. As of, um, this is the, actually the 30-day study that was just recent, uh, there was a $42,955 reservoir balance. The target was $30,000. There was $12,000 above target. And for the first time in the client's life, the very first time, the client was able to save money going forward. And Dave actually did, I believe, um, see at the rate, at this rate, this is 30 days. Let's go back here. Uh, this is the 30 day number. So where would it be? It would be here. So they, they would baseline consumption of 12,000. That's the two trips into their bill pay accounts. They were over on that, and then, uh, here we go. Over a six month period, over a six month period, this client actually saved $42,000. So the pattern would be roughly 80. And what Dave ended up selling was, I believe, $35,000 of permanent life insurance premium and moved the differential $12,000 into a growth portfolio. And this was from a client who had no life insurance and literally not a dime safe, and was living on 100% of everything that they had. So, again, you create the reservoir, and what happens the moment you do that with a zero balance, expenses travel on a separate path, you set a target, you bolt income to the reservoir, you bolt the outflows, which goes to the bill pay accounts, and then as the reservoir fills, you're able to provide other assets that are providing passive cash flow in the future. Life insurance does provide tax-free income in the future. It could be other things. But the more, the bigger, the faster, the more income is received and the client's life is forever changed. Uh, but it, so what we also recommend is because now um, we have this data. Imagine if every one of your clients was scheduled for the entire year in your calendar and expecting you to come with recommendations and willing to make choices and take action. And that's exactly what happens because they've agreed on the rules of engagement. In other words, if the client's target balance is 30,000, you are asking a question early on saying, if it was over 30,000, would you be ready to take advantage and take it and find
find an opportunity for the difference? And they'd say yes. And so what we're transforming is the current world where we do client reviews, where you chase the client, you schedule a review meeting, you get new data, you prepare a proposal, you propose a solution, the client probably needs to be resold to what you already sold them. You hope they make the right choice. Then you start over. Now, what's funny about this is, you know, if you think about the review business, the review meetings for the life insurance business, it's like, hey, Kathy, let's go review your life insurance. Oh, yeah, you still have no cash value in the second year and your dividend sucks or it didn't perform. Like, now how do you feel about that? And by the way, would you like to buy some more? You know? It sounds, now why are you saying yes? You'd never want to buy more if it looked that bad. But that's what our review meetings are historically. Now, in this world, we call them calibration meetings. There's no planning and preparation. There's one continuous conversation because you're always looking to the next thing to do with cash flow. And that's the story. So with that, I will stop sharing. Or I will figure out how to stop sharing. I don't know what I did here. I know it's here somewhere. Um, so, uh, Vince, I, I don't mean to interrupt. I think you're kind of coming to the end or no. Yeah. All right. So I, I would encourage anybody that's on the webinar, um, feel free to ask some questions if you'd like. I have a few follow-up questions, uh, Vince, which I don't believe that you touched on. Sure. Um, uh, you know, in no particular order. So this is not the first platform that's out there. How does this differentiate from uh, some of the other uh, technology um, that folks are currently using? I know we got that question a number of times in the yeah. uh, during the meeting. Um, yeah, so someone... that's great. It's a great question. It's a fair question. Uh, but here's the here's the reality. If you went online and looked at your uh, App Store or Google Play, or I think I think it's called Google Play on the Android variant, right? If you take a look at that, there are probably 50 applications that are all about saving money. So what there are three general categories of apps. So the first app is called a uh, budgeting app. And what that does is it tells you what you did last year. It, it, it tries to have you engineer a budget for next year. The problem with that, and this, and this is just the God's honest truth, there is literally not a single scientific study that budgeting works in people's as lived experiences. In other words, it works in math. So, you know, we're coming up to the fall and, you know, I know everybody's jonesing for that pumpkin spice lattes, and some of you might even have a three pumpkin spice latte a day fix, right? You need it. It's bad. It's good for you. Actually, I can't imagine it's good for you, but people like those things. So if I were your financial advisor and I told you to not buy two of the three and put the money away, someday you'll have a million bucks. There's no doubt about it, except that you will learn to hate me because you love your pumpkin spice lattes. In fact, how many of you have actually heard the conversation? You should stop smoking because you'd be a millionaire if you just put the money away. You know, it's all true, except you can't stop smoking, right? That's like really hard to do. So budgeting app, budgeting doesn't work, works in math, it doesn't work in as lived experience. The second is the Roundup app. I'm going to Starbucks to buy my pumpkin spice latte for five dollars and fifty cents. And it, and a roundup app says, you know, let's take another fifty cents and put it into your savings. So now you're spending $5 instead of $4.50, $6 instead of $5.50. But so it's not dealing with the $5.50 you spend, right? So it's not helping you stop consumption. It's simply adding to what you were spending and those don't work. And then the third is what we like to call, um, so we did the, the, we did the budgeting and then there's the historicals. And the historicals just show you, you know, where you're at. So the budgeting, the roundups, the historicals, none of them get you anywhere. And here's the reality. That's available for everybody on God's green earth. And yet, if you went to the FRED site, and you know FRED is the St. Louis Federal Reserve, and you looked at the savings rates in the United States, you discover it's 4% of gross, gross income. 4%. Now, what we know, Kathy, what we know, because we have the data, 
is that our clients save an average of 33% of after-tax cash flow. That's the 6,000 clients, not talking about advisors, that's a few hundred advisors, but the clients are saving roughly over 30% of after-tax cash flow, which is why on the video you saw, we were able to say that the savings rate is about six times the national average. Um, any of the things that are available, like let's say e-money, doesn't provide you with a dashboard and a moment-to-moment -moment relationship with what the client actually has saved. So it's lovely, it doesn't work. And by the way, that happens to use aggregation technology. For anybody on this call who's had e-money, they know aggregation breaks constantly and you have to either hire somebody to aggregate or just not do that at all. Um, this is all direct feed. Um, so the, and then there are just planning tools, right? So, so that was a question that you gave me the last time I was on the airplane and you sent me that one about some app that uh, was, when I Googled it, it was a piece of planning software, but it's not, I'm, we're, we're not a, this is very, very important. Currents is not a planning tool. Currents is a cash flow sourcing tool, and we are agnostic as to what planning tools you use once you have the cash flow. So I don't care if you're selling life insurance on a paper napkin, or if you're selling it using e-money or money, uh, what's the money pro or money guide pro, whatever it's called. I don't care what it is. You still need to source cash flow in order to be able to make recommendations. And nothing sources the cash flow for your act activities. Is that good enough, Kathy? Yeah, no, that's great. Um, something else I think that's important to share is that uh, Agency One um, knows a number of advisors that have used version one of Currents. Those are my words, not yours, as Vince. This is, I think, version two. Yes. Uh, and maybe you can talk about the progression and. Um, you know, a little bit of the history and the success uh, sure. that you had, which then caused you to want to continue down this path. Sure. So version one. So I'll, I'll tell the whole story because I have time. So about six years ago, that's to go back even further. About 22 years ago, Dave Muzika was a New York Life agent. And at the time, New York Life was dabbling in the world of LEAP, L-E-A-P. Uh, some of you may have heard of it. It was a selling system. Dave got pretty good at it, but he would come to the symposiums and he discovered that the vast majority of the people in the symposium and the people who were the best users were guardian advisors. So he did, he was a highly productive New York Life agent and he decided to leave New York Life and come over to the Guardian. So when he came over to the Guardian, we became friends. And actually, we were friends before he came over to the Guardian. I was not responsible for that, but he, he came over. And he became very good friends with Bob Castellone, who had invented the LEAP system. And at one study group meeting that he was at, that Bob was at, Bob made an offhand comment that we're simply handling cash flow incorrectly. And that we really needed to do was get all the cash flow and then pay people a salary. And so Dave went back to the office and he said, yeah, yeah I'm going to try that. And so he started doing this manually. And all of a sudden, his income skyrockets and he starts making Guardian's President's Council, which was about three times more than where he was at. He was doing well, but this was three times more. And he did it like overnight. And he's banging away at that. He's doing really well. And then he calls me up one day about six years. Went, by the way, we're friends and I did the estate planning for his family. His, his father and his brother are entrepreneurs and, and inventors. And he called me about six years ago, he calls me up and he says, Vince, I want to show you what I'm doing. Would you like to see I'm doing the business? I said, sure, Dave. So he shows me what he's doing. And I said, Dave, this, this might be the most brilliant thing I've ever seen. But I'm going to tell you something, I'm never going to do it. And he goes, why would, why are you never going to do it? And I said, well, first of all, it's manual. You're building it on a brokerage platform so you can get the data, but it's manual. And so you, your lift to get the data every time you talk to a client is Herculean, you know, like crazy. 
I said, the second thing is you're not going to be able to scale. You're going to get to a point where, you know, I don't know if it's 100 clients, I don't know if it's 150, but you're going to get stopped and it's, that's it. And I'm telling you, I'm not hiring any more employees. Matter of fact, I'm trying to figure out a way to reduce the number of employees I have. So I, you know, but, so this is not for me. And then he said, well, Vince, since you're connected to like everybody under the sun, could you help me look for software in the marketplace that does this? And let's start with the stuff that's actually in the investment community. And so we went to Parquet and Securities. That was our broker dealer. I'm just going to end share so I'm like this. Right? So we went to our broker dealer and nothing existed that did this. Like literally nothing. So he said, I have an idea. This was that fateful day a few years back. He said, let's build it ourselves. Let's build an app for clients and a dashboard for advisors so they can handle an unlimited number of people. And I said, sure, let's do that. So the first place we went was where I had the most important relationship. I went to the Guardian and we said that we wanted to do this. And they actually lent us money, which by the way, we paid back two years later. They left us money, we put in our own capital, and we built something that was behind their single sign-on on the brokerage platform. Now, it worked perfectly. And we had 362 advisors, and all the data that I shared with you, we have, because we know exactly what they did, exactly how they did it, because of the way we were able to monitor the gro at, at gross levels where the money went. We don't know what happens at the client level. We don't care. We want to know what the gross movement of money was. And it was astonishing look astonishing but there were a few problems first of all if you brought somebody new into the business if if kathy were to let's say bring um a new client into the business uh a new uh, sorry a new agent into the business the problem that you'd face is that they wouldn't be, well, they wouldn't be licensed right so they without a license the uh they couldn't get into the system so that was a problem. And then um, the second was, was that it took 10 days to open the account, like literally 10 days, because you had brokerage papers, you had the account paperwork, you had to do e-sign, you had to chase down the client. It was just a continuous, painful process. And so Dave said, I have an idea because the technology is now where we need it to be. Let's build an application that sits on a banking platform. So we built Currents, which is built on a blank banking platform. And it literally takes 10 minutes for a client to get into the system and bolt themselves together. And as I said, there is no issue with custodialship. Uh, we are now approved at Mass Mutual, One America, um, Penn Mutual, a few broker dealers, a few RIAs. And why, it, why it's such a low number, although what I just mentioned was pretty impressive, is because I am the sales force. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's my job. So, you know, I still have a life. Uh, outside of this, so it's a little challenging. But um, the differential, like Mo asked the call, thanks, can you walk through the onboarding process from a high level, version one versus two? Hopefully I did that, Mo. It's basically like 10 days versus 10 minutes. Um, what I'm going to do, let me let me pull up. And uh, then, Vince, while you're pulling that up, I, I, don't, I just want to acknowledge that Ralph Adamo has a question, and as soon as you're done that, uh, Ralph, I think you put yourself off mute. So once Vince is done. Uh, Wait, just, uh, give me, yeah, just give me one moment to yeah. demonstrate something. Going uh, through that, we'll get to you, Ralph. So, I mean, like in the world of simple, uh, that's the mobile advice report. Okay, so let me share my screen again. As soon as I find my little tool to do that, here we go, share screen. Okay, so let's see. So here's the advisor. I'm assuming, by the way, you could see my screen, yes? Yeah. Okay, good. 
So this is the advisor portal and you would log in, you go to the dashboard and you just had a conversation with the client. Then the training is there for the conversation. And now you're going to invite the client. You click a button on your dashboard. You put in the client's name and phone number. You send the invitation. It shows up as a text message. So the client now has a text message that allows them to download the app. It says, welcome to Currents. They get a brief reminder about recharting their course, that they're in control. The control is in their hands and how smart money flows. And then they go to create their account and they put in their name and uh, create an email and password. And that links them to the current system. They get an email verification. And then all of a sudden they're in and they get to see their advisor in this mock-up. It's Ralph Edwards, not a real person. And then they now get to open the bank account and they put in their information, their birth, social security number, their address. And now they just opened up the account. By the way, in, in the world of FinTech, this is how easy it literally is, or, or literally how easy it is to open an account now. This is why banks are worried because all those locations, those, those branch offices, eventually will be eliminated simply by virtue of the fact that people can do all this stuff online. The need for human beings is really, really reduced. What we are committed to is not disenfranchising human beings in the relationship with clients. So now they're going to connect their accounts and they're going to link their existing, already existing accounts with Plaid. Most people on this call should know Plaid. Okay, they can link other accounts. And so now all their accounts are set and now they're gonna do their direct deposit. And using technology, they're able to actually have the app go out and grab their direct deposit if they sign in, put in their password, and we want 100% of their income to go into currents. And now, they get to map their baseline. And we usually recommend that this is an advisor-driven meeting. I think it's the best practice. We figure out what the drips are that need to go into their accounts. And the baseline is now set. And from that point forward, they now have their income coming into the reservoir and their outflows. And their data shows everything they've got. So they know what their linked accounts are. They know what their transfer history is. They know what their direct deposit was and how that looks. Okay, that's actually new. Um, they know what check deposit, what deposits were posted, like all that. And they can connect to us and also introduce a friend. And there's an email that goes out that's sent to you and to the friend. So that's the story. I mean, it's like it couldn't be easier. Now, once they're in. Right. Once they're in, we have this where you have a dashboard. And so in the case of Teresa Webb, we know what her income is, inflows and outflows. And we even end up with a report that shows where she is at over any date range. So they know that we know that they know they have money to do the things that we're asking them to do. I always wanted to say that that way, but that's what that's the way they know that we know that they know that we know. Yeah, I got they, that. I and, followed that, and yeah. and and so on and so forth, right? Got it. Here's the here's the thing, and 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 Kathy, you don't know me as somebody who doesn't tell the truth, right? Oh. I would not BS anybody on this call. When you are in front of a client on a quarterly review or semi annual, however you set up with a client, and it is crystal clear that there is free cash flow that is dis disconnected from their consumption. And they know it's in their reservoir and they know it's over target. You can literally transact with somebody in 15 to 20 minutes because they are expecting you to tell them where to put the money. My personal best, my personal best was after somebody was in the system for two and a half months, two years ago, he was a very volatile income, but we smoothed it out with the reservoir and the drips into his bill pay accounts. I did $125,000 premium 
in 45 minutes, of which the first 25 minutes was chit chat about barbecue. Because that's like my COVID hobby was barbecue. And three months later, I did another $29,000 of premium. By, by the way, I'm talking about all base, right? So fast, makes your head spin. And I just heard uh, one of uh, my advisors just did a $325,000 premium on the same basis um, in about 45 minutes, simply because the cash flow is corralled. It was, it, it, it was just freaking astonishing. Uh, Vince, I want to make sure we get to Ralph Adamo's question. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Ralph. Ralph. Hey, Vince, thanks much, Kathy. Uh, two parts. One, I think you've kind of addressed it maybe indirectly, but you can maybe speak to it more. One is about the broker dealer and their OSJ oversight and compliance and the kind of issues that they tend to have. Um, but I, I heard you say that you're in a couple BDs and RAA, so you probably figured out how to navigate and thread that needle. That's number one. Then number two, do you have some sort of supportive training or best practices, um, gatherings of groups uh, that help, uh, that are doing this, that are kind of sharing so that the ramp up of, of uh, learning is a lot quicker than us bumbling around in front of a client trying to what, figure it out? Ralph, we don't want you bumbling around because it's bad for the brand. So yes, we have extensive training. Um, we have at least one training call a week. We're probably going to expand that to two or three uh, that may have very specific functions. But Mondays, I believe at 2 Eastern, um, either Dave does that call or I do the call to take people through it. But on the dashboard itself, under resources, there is a tab that will take you to training. That's being rebuilt probably in the next two weeks. It'll be totally different, but it'll all be you know in the same, it's same church, different pew. Um, the enrollment, we call it the current enrollment talk. That talk takes about 10, 12 minutes. At the end of the talk, the client goes, yeah, I'll, I, I want to do this. And then you're off to the races, right? So okay. we're not going to leave you in the lurch. We have that. And by the way, we have a national conference that we just completed. Um, it was a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday of last week. We tend to do it. For the last three years, we did it in the summer. Uh, and we did it in Nashville, which is a great town. Um, and people walked away with really usable things. You know, it was it was a lot of it was about developing business and things like that. But it was it was awesome. Right? It was just it was just a great experience for everybody. Um, Very good. Yeah, Ralph. We we uh, going back to the broker dealer question, which you asked. Because you're not selling anything, and because there's no compensation paid to the advisor. And all you're doing is creating a structure. What we found is that when we go through company compliance, they go, we have no problem with this. But we're prepared to defend that position. And, 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 and Vince, um, you or someone in the organization is wide open to have those types of calls, you know, and get if, into the weeds with the compliance if, folks? If we didn't, we wouldn't be where we are, we are now. Yeah, so we are totally ready and willing and able to have those types of conversations. What would you say for us advisors who are registered, um, how we open the conversation? What do we send as the preliminary? Do you have certain preliminary materials that tend to I, work best? Sure, Ralph. I think the easiest way to start is you apply, if you're with a BD, you send in an OBA saying you're going to do cash flow uh, monitoring and recommendations for clients. And you're going to, as a tool, you're going to use currents. And then they're going to write back to you and say, what's currents? And then we'll provide you with a compliance deck for that purpose. And then they're going to want more information. Now, the reason why this is great for us is because, I mean, I, I don't mean anything bad by this, but you're just Ralph. But the moment we get the BD to approve it, that opens up the entire range of opportunities for us. So we spend the time to get that across. I, I do not believe, no, we have not had a single circumstance where we haven't gotten approval. Sometimes it takes a while and sometimes it's really fast, but, uh, in, you know, in Mass Mutual, it took 45 days, okay. which is pretty darn good. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank um, you. Great. Uh, does any, where we've got five minutes left, Vince, you've been extremely generous with your time. And um, I know you had a link as to how people could sign up with a code. Uh, maybe you want to talk a little bit about pricing, yeah. um, so, what clients can expect, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, let me, first, let me do this. Let me take the link and put it into the chat. Actually, I, that didn't work. I have to do it for everyone. Let me do that again. And boom. Okay. So everybody should have a link. So the retail, if you went retail and you didn't know me or Kathy, you'd be paying $250 a month for cars. So because of my relationship with Agency One, the link you see here gives you a 20% discount. So it's $200 a month. Now, what's important to note is the first four text messages you send, you will not be charged. So when you go into the into this, um, you won't have a charge until you send the fifth. My recommendation is that you actually use the link, put in your credit card, get all the features because the premium version actually allows you to delegate to employees that, we're gonna, that are gonna help you. And if you're thinking that this is a scarcity game and you're gonna do four and learn what it's about, that would be silly. Like you really wanna you know, play the game like it matters. Um, the client pays $40 every 90 days. The account itself pays over 3% interest. I think as of last week, it was 3.3. It's connected to the Fed funds rate. Um, uh, but that information is available on your app and in the client app. Um, and I will tell you that nobody blinks. The advisors don't blink. The clients don't blink. They start saving money at an astonishing rate. I mean, my funniest story was a few years ago, I put my daughter's sister-in-law in the system. She was over Thanksgiving. I was back in New York. She was over Thanksgiving and said, Vince, I understand that Ariel, that's my daughter, is doing something with savings. We don't have a dime. Can you help us? I said, absolutely. I put her in the system. In February of the following year, so that was Thanksgiving to February, she said, why did you put money in our account? I go, what do you mean? She goes, there's $3,500 in there. Why did you put that in there? I go, I didn't put that in there. You put it in. They go, we don't understand. I said, it's good that you don't understand. Just keep doing what you're doing. It'll be fine. So people learn to live on their drips. And magically, they start to accumulate money. It's it's really kind of astonishing. Um, uh, one of the other things was um, when we when you presented during the meeting and people were asking questions, um, there were a few advisors that specifically focused uh, in the employee benefits uh, space, and you know they're working with uh, big corporations. Yeah. And, that was just, that seemed to be a phenomenal opportunity when you're working with business owners. Yeah, so, um, we, so we have a webinar that's suitable for use in, a, in an employee setting. The story I can tell you about that is we have an advisor who's still using the old system and he had a hundred person 401k plan and everybody was making good income as a tech company. And he got the employer to agree that he would do the seminar for the employees. He invited everybody, I believe 36 showed up and he made 16 of them clients for the version one. He did it four more times. He's at roughly 80% of the employee group are in the system. The employer was so thrilled with the first uptake that the employer paid for the employee costs in the plan. So he gave them the money to, to and, and that one, the version one was $180 in arrears. So it was, it's more money and the employer covered it. Uh, next week, I am at the Business Enterprise Institute meeting, BEI conference in Colorado. Um, I am going to posit that the, and everybody on this call to find this data, that employees come to work with financial concerns and they destroy their productivity because of that. So my premise is, is that if you bring this into an employer, 
and for the de minimis cost of what's effectively $160 an employee, you can set employees on the path to accumulating money, which means that they can handle their debt, buy their insurance, create value for the future. And I, be I, be I personally believe that that would improve business value simply because the productivity employees will probably likely double. That still doesn't bring them to 100%, by the way. But, you know, because I think the word on the street is, is that most of the employees come to the dance with something like, you know, 40% productivity. Not the people on this call, but the people that work for you, but, but you know those people who just, you know, don't get the job done. And so I, that's my belief. I believe that this cures a lot of financial ills. And then, Kathy, before we part, I don't know the age of the people on the call are, but here's the thing that most of you have to ultimately recognize. And that is, is that if you're in the life insurance business, you do not have a transferable business. It's just not transferable. And why do I say that? Look, I'm in the estate planning business primarily. And when I die, if somebody takes over my business, they're going to get meager re renewals and, they, and, they, and they'll probably end up replacing my clientele's business just simply because it's just easier to do that than it is to service anybody. So, <laughs> so I think, actually I know, that I just formed a new organization called Valent Wealth. Our goal is to put everybody in currents so that way there is a continuous, long-term relationship that's had surrounding cash flow because as I said in those earlier slides, the money goes hot to an alarming rate. And if I can get G2 into currents and provide value for generation two, instead of you know their college buddies, Morgan Stanley thing, whatever, you know, I, I think that really makes a difference for the advisors and also for the work that we've done for all the years with our clientele. Vince, nobody could have said that better than you. And uh, we are at the top of the hour, actually, we're, we're about three minutes after four. Uh, for those of you that have stayed till the end of the call, uh, we are available. Vince's, I can share Vince's contact information. Uh, we are here to help you. This is a, uh, a platform that Agency One is absolutely supporting. And if you'd like more, more information, uh, please reach out to myself, Gonzalo. We'll connect you with Vince and um, let us know how we can help you with this or uh, or anything else. I want to thank everybody for participating. Vince, thank you. Yeah. And, um, you know, we look forward to your continued success with this platform. Um, Gonzalo, I don't know if you have anything more you'd like to add. You're on mute. Vince, no final words, just a big thank you for continuing to be supportive in this. I think the, really, the technology is brilliant and I uh, I hope that uh, people will find ways to use it and continue to, to help their clients. So thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both. Uh, I will say this, I, I made a presentation, main platform on the last day of the Forum 400 meeting last year. Yep. And I had people come up to me and go, why weren't you on first? Like it was that big a deal. And we did a bunch of business with advisors who sat there and said, this is something that crystal clear makes the most sense in our practice. Like we know there are different parts of our practice where this fits. And my guess is based on what you were saying, it fits everywhere. We just have to get good at it to make that work. 100%. Okay. Um, thank, thank you again. You. Uh, and thank you everyone. If agency one can help you with any of your cases, if you have any questions, please reach out. And uh, we'll be in touch. Thanks, Vince. Thanks, Vince. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Vince. Everyone, great job. Thanks, Mo. Take care.